Hello? Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Tristan. Uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, Torch Deploy. Uh, Torch Deploy is a system for uh, running eager mode PyTorch models in production. Uh, we just launched into beta. Uh, so we hope you try it out after this. Um, let us know what you think of it. If you have any feedback, uh, feel free to uh, yeah, submit GitHub issues, uh, that kind of thing. Um, so I'm first going to talk about like, what Torch Deploy is, and then get into a little bit about why you might want to use it. Um, and then finally, uh, get into just a little bit about how it actually works under the hood. So, uh, to start, um, kind of what is Torch Deploy? Uh, so, Torch Deploy is a system for running uh, multiple Python interpreters uh, inside a single process. Um, so, this is designed to make it so you can uh, basically run your eager Python models um, in sort of production environments. Uh, so, you don't have to do uh, things like scripting and that kind of thing. So. It uses completely uh, independent Python interpreters, um, so there's no global interpreter lock. Um, so you avoid a lot of the issues that come from normal mi uh, Python multiprocessing. So uh, Torch Deploy is a C++ library intended for use for uh, production inference services. Um, it's a targeting right now for production for uh, Linux x86, 64-bit, um, but we also have support for ARM 64-bit uh, as well. So um, here on the right, side of here. Uh, this is sort of the hello world for Torch Deploy. Um, you can see here at the beginning, uh, there's the interpreter manager. Uh, this manages all of the sub-interpreters. You can specify any arbitrary number of interpreters. In this case, it's two. Uh, you then can acquire an interpreter. In this case, we're just grabbing one. Um, but in an actual production system, you'd probably be doing this for multiple threads and independently managing the interpreters. Um, you can then basically just construct your model in Python how you would. So this, in this case right here, is just importing a very simple model. It's just a convolutional layer um, with some parameters there. Um, but in an actual system, you can just import from some Python files or a Torch package or you know, construct it in line like this. Um, this returns a wrapped Python object from C++. Um, so you can then basically use it how you might uh, any other C++ or any other like Python or C++ object. Um, so in this case, we then basically just run it. So you just pass in a Torch tensor, um, execute it, that returns a Python uh, wrapped object, and then you can convert it back to a tensor. So you can do any pre or post processing in C++ um, and then just pass it straight through there. Um, the biggest benefit for Torch Deploy here is you don't need to make any modifications to uh, your model. Um, it runs exactly like as it was written. So you can take the training model and turn it into the production side. So it's much faster to take it sort of from a research to production environment. Um, and it also doesn't require any tracing or scripting. Um, so for much more complex models, you can just kind of keep it in uh, the eager mode Python. And, if you have performance, you can always go in later and use some other techniques to optimize on that. Um, Torch Deploy also has a shared backend. So all of the interpreters and the parent process are all sharing the same libtorch backend. Uh, so you don't need any extra copies of your model. The memory is shared between all the processes, or well, all, sorry, I should say all of the interpreters. Um, and you can pass back and forth with like zero copies because it's all just a pointer uh, to the underlying data. Um, Plus, there's no process boundaries here, so you don't need to deal with like Python multiprocessing or multiple processes. Um, and you can kind of manage and monitor your inference job um, just in a single process. So you can use a lot of standard uh, server monitoring tools and that kind of thing. Uh, so here's a uh, kind of an overview of what this all looks like in, uh, when you're actually uh, running this in your system. There's a couple of different uh, colored sections here. Uh, the white section is going to be just your code, basically. So your like C++ binary. Um, and that's where like the interpreter manager lives. Um, and purple is libtorch. So this is actually where everything executes. So this is where the tensors, kernels, and operators all live. Um, and this supports all of the uh, backends that PyTorch supports. In yellow and red, you actually have the sub-interpreters here. Um, so this actually includes an entire copy of the Python interpreter, so libpython. Um, and this is also where your model code will be running. Um, the key bit for Torch Deploy is Torch is actually split into two different pieces here. 
Um, so libtorch has all of the C++ backend and all of the like real heavy lifting. And then there is the basically the sort of front end to this, which is the uh, libtorch Python library, which is all of the Python specific bits. Um, so within each interpreter, we can just load a single copy, or we can load a copy of the libtorch Python for each of the interpreters, as well as any like Python C extensions. Um, but then you have the shared backend. Um, so this lets you actually have these independent Python interpreters. Um, one of the big new features of the Torch Deploy beta um, is you can now actually load from just a standard Python path, in, like standard Python environment, like this is virtual env or conda. Um, and uh, to do this, we had to do sort of a bunch of work to make it so we can load uh, arbitrary C extensions that you can just kind of like pip install um, at runtime. Um, so this view on the right here is uh, kind of a simplified version of what sort of the memory space is going to look like this. So you have your main program, which is just loaded, and then you would be dynamically loading libtorch, um, which is shared between everything. Um, and with deploy, to do this all, we basically uh, play some tricks with how symbols work. Um, so with libtorch, since we want that to be available everywhere, we can load that using uh, basically a global namespace so the symbols are loaded in everywhere. And then for the individual sub-interpreters, we can use a local namespace. So those symbols are only available to that one particular interpreter. Uh, to actually support arbitrary C extensions, you need to be able to actually still link that against the Python interpreter. So all the, uh, like, the Python C extension can talk to just that specific Python interpreter and not all of them. Um, so we actually had to implement a custom linker um, that can basically do all of this uh, symbol resolution um, in a much more fine-grained control. So you can actually have uh, these completely separate independent interpreters, so there's no global variables, and you can avoid the Python global interpreter lock. Uh, so yeah, um, we're now in beta. Um, if you want to find out more about this, uh, there's documentation on the website, um, as well as on GitHub. Uh, but yeah, we hope you check it out and uh, you know, send us some feedback. Uh, thank you. Thank you.